What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you Google Bard, which is now available to the public. There's no more waiting list. This was recently announced at their previous conference, and you can get access to it right now. All you need to do is head to Google and search for Google Bard. Otherwise, head to bard.google.com. Now, it's available in 180 countries and territories and plans to expand support for 40 languages. And on top of this, it's meant to compete with ChatGPT, but the biggest difference is that it can pull information from the web. That's the exciting bits about Bard in a nutshell, and it's currently still an experiment. Google loves to scrap experiments. They have a huge history of doing that. But of course, if it's a ChatGPT competitor and free, well, hey, it's worth a shot. So all we need to do is head to bard.google.com, click Try Bard in the bottom right. And now we need to accept the terms and privacy, such as Bard uses your past conversations and the general area that you're in to provide you with the best answer. Bard is an experimental technology, may sometimes give inaccurate or inappropriate information. Don't rely on Bard's responses. Don't include confidential or sensitive information, and your feedback will help make Bard better. Standard things, I'm pretty sure ChatGPT and almost all other AI services are roughly the same. Then Bard is an experiment as you try. Remember, Bard won't always get it right. Bard gets better on your feedback, and you can opt in to receive updates about Bard through email. But of course, this is optional. You can tick it or not tick it, depending on what you want. And there we go. We're now in Bard. So it's pretty much just a chat GPT, but not really. So let's go ahead and say, what is the main difference between you and chat GPT? We'll wait for it to generate an answer and it just spits it out in one go. So chat GPT is a generative language model. This is a conversational AI chatbot, it means it is better at generating text while chat GPT is better at carrying a conversation. Interesting. If you ask Bard to write a poem, it can do that. But if you ask me to have a conversation with you, it might not be able to do that. Overall, both powerful AI tools, etc. The interesting thing about Google Bard is that it had a huge update to the new Palm 2 model that it's using in the background. It's a huge update with lots of changes, I assume. And of course, it's even better that everyone has access to it. As for limits, I'm not too sure what the limits would be. I'm sure there has to be something, but Google has at least a little bit more money than OpenAI and ChatGBC. But anyways, we can head to Bard Activity on the far left here, which will take us to myactivity.google.com, where we can choose whether Bard stores our activity, such as prompts we submit, the responses and the feedback, which we can turn off at any time here, which of course helps with privacy, but your chats will be stored for 48 hours as it says on this page. And of course, we can auto delete activity older than 18 months here. On top of this, we can manually delete within certain ranges here too. As you can see, my previous prompts are here. Cool. All right. Well, I'll check ChatGPT and grab one of my last questions. All right. So one of my last few chats here was about clearing a PowerShell console without actually clearing it, basically making a whole bunch of new lines and scrolling to the top. Now, the answers that it gave me weren't really satisfactory. I managed to find this answer here on Stack Overflow myself. So let's see if Google Bard can do a better response than this here. Of course, this code didn't really work for me. So I'll chuck it in here, send it, and we see something here about keyboard presses. So I'll say, this is for use in a PowerShell script. And now we have some more information here. This command will send a series of new line characters, which will scroll the screen up until it's empty, and the no new line parameter prevents the line from being inserted. That's interesting. Clear host, and a few different options here. Pretty cool. This is something a bit better than the responses I got here, as these were mostly the same. I even got an error, or multiple errors rather. So let's see if this does better. I'll open PowerShell, type in a bunch of nonsense here, and give it the code. Now, nothing happened there. Let's try combining all of it, as they say. So these two here. No, oh, well, that worked, except it cleared the screen. Anyways, you get the point. It's similar, but not the same as ChatGPT. What you get from it really depends on how you word your prompts, etc. But the interesting thing is, is that it should pull from the internet. Let's go ahead and ask it about, well, let's reset chat first. Tell me about the GitHub repo, the Techno Account Switcher, which is another bit of software that I created here. Now, ChatGPT doesn't know anything about this. Let's see what Google returns. And there we go. There's some information about it. If I copy this same exact prompt into ChatGPT, for example, using even GPT-4, I'll use one of the 25 messages in three hours for this. Let's see what it returns. And well, 
It doesn't know anything about it. They're essentially telling me to just go read about it myself. The response here is actually really good. Let's see if we can get even more involved. Let's jump into this file, for example, and see if it can tell us anything. Oh, cool. All right, so it looked at the platform's JSON from my account switcher server. These are the platforms supported by the Techno account switcher. Each platform is represented by an object. Name executable files registry tells me about how to write it, etc. That's actually really cool. The fact that it pulled a file from the internet is absolutely mind blowing and the fact that it looked at it read it and tells me something about it it's it's crazy this really does seem like it is something that could easily dethrone chat gpt especially now that it's available publicly for free this is actually pretty crazy so faq what's bard all about etc i don't know if they mentioned anything about countries here not really updates there we go 180 countries and territories but they don't say anything about them. You know what? Instead of Googling for it, let's ask Bard. What are the Google Bard 180 countries and territories? Uh, doesn't have the capacity to help with that. Okay, well, that's not really what I was looking for. <laughs> Interesting. Let's go with, please list the 180 countries and territories that Google Bard is now available in. Okay, well, it's odd that it can access the internet in some ways, but not others, where you can use Bard. All right, there we go. Sorry for the flashbang. You can use it in English, Japanese, and Korean. In these countries and territories here, you'll find this linked down below. As far as I understand, it's mostly just a few European countries due to laws or something along those lines. There are ways around this, but I won't get into that here. Anyways, so that's really about it for this quick video. It's really cool that this is available and has the power that it does. It's a bit inconsistent in some ways but anyways it's actually really cool and somewhat more powerful than chat gpt in some aspects which is mind-blowing so thank you all for watching my name's been troubleshoot and i'll see you all next time ciao